Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So lately, Ansley has been obsessed with learning about ancient Egyptian history, which I think is really cool. So what are we gonna draw and paint today? Today we're gonna draw and paint the Egyptian pyramids. So fun, let's get started. For today's project, my paper is Fluid 100. It's a cold pressed cotton watercolor paper. It's one of the less expensive cotton papers out there. So this is great for painting with kids and with students. It's five by seven inches. We've taped it down with painter's tape. We each have a water jar. I'm using my Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolor set of paints. This is 12 different colors. And we each have a watercolor brush, size eight round brush, Sharpies and pencils and paper towel. And this is important for controlling how much water is in your brush when yep. you're painting. All right, we have an image in front of us from Pixabay and we'll leave a link in the description so you guys can download that. We're gonna start by drawing the pyramids on. Now it's helpful to start with the foreground to decide where the desert sand is gonna go. Mm -hmm. So to do that, all we have to do is decide on how far down our ground is gonna be. I'm gonna say maybe about an inch up from the bottom. So we'll make a little mark right there towards the bottom of the paper and then one on the other side. And then we'll just draw a line connecting it. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but that's where the sand is. The next thing we're gonna do is draw the small pyramid. Should we do the small one first? Yeah. It's on the left side in the image. So let's decide on how tall it's gonna be. I'm gonna say it's gonna come up right about to the middle of the paper. So I'm gonna make a little dot there and make sure there's enough space for the downward slope of the pyramid. So I'd move it over just a little more right here maybe because we need to have enough room to draw an angled line for it to connect down to the sand. So we're gonna draw a triangle shape, but we're gonna just start with one side. I'm gonna take that dot that I just drew and draw an angled line coming down to the sand. And then we'll just start at the dot again and finish our triangle shape. Okay, yeah, it's the back side that's kind of covered up by the big pyramid. Let's wait on doing that part. So first, let's draw the big pyramid before we draw the back side of the little one. And the big pyramid is a little bit taller, isn't it? So let's bring it up quite a bit higher and a little further over on your paper. Remember to make room for the slopes coming down. So I'm gonna draw a dot right about there. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then connect it so that it touches the base of this pyramid like this. And then we'll draw the other side. We have a little bit of room on this side of the paper. So just draw your triangle shape leaving a little bit of room. And now let's draw the back side of this pyramid. And we want it to come all the way down to almost the far side of the paper. But once again, we're gonna start at the top of our big pyramid and draw a line connecting it all the way down almost to the, the far side of your paper. Now that looks a little too curvy. Let's see if we can make it more straight. I got it. You know, if you have a hard time with straight lines, another thing you can use is a ruler and then you want it to come down to there and then just trace along the edge, try it. So hold on to the ruler so that it doesn't wobble and then trace along that edge to make a straight line. Yeah. See how it makes a nice perfect straight line? It's like two. Yeah, that looks better. Now we're gonna draw the back side of this pyramid. So start again at your point, the little pyramid, and create a skinny little triangle right here coming down to the base. Perfect. So that's all we have to draw. We can decide to outline them with Sharpies next or we can just jump in with paint. What would you like to do? Should we do Sharpies? Yep. All right. And if you wanna keep going with straight lines, you can use your ruler to fix your edges and make it nice and perfectly straight. Would you like to try that? Sure, with the Sharpie. Mm -hmm. Make sure to use your other hand to hold the ruler steady. Job. So now we're just tracing our pyramids and making them even more perfect with a Sharpie marker. And then trace this line too, connecting all the way down. See if you can make that one a little straighter. See how it kind of curves? I'm going to use the ruler. Good idea. Yeah. yeah, that's it. I can hold it for you. Beautiful. All right, now there's one more feature on the big pyramid, kind of this capstone. So I'm gonna draw a 
capstone shape at the top like that. And then I'm going to erase my pencil marks. And we're ready to start painting. Good job. All right. I'm going to use a spray bottle with some water in it to activate and wet my paints and get them ready to go. Make sure you have your paper towel and your watercolor brush. We're actually going to start with the sky. Now we want to create a blue sky with some clouds. And I'm going to show you guys a technique for making clouds that's called lifting. Now each of us needs a little bit of a paper towel and we'll get to that after we've done the blue of the sky. But what we'll do is we'll take a wet paper towel and we'll actually blot it into the blue sky to lift the color back out to create the clouds. Cool. We've never done this technique before, so we're gonna see how it goes. All right, I'm gonna use this turquoise blue for my sky, but first I'm gonna start with water. So I'm gonna paint with water inside of all the sky. Try not to paint the water into the pyramids. So we're painting around the pyramids with our clean water. And you might have to look at it sideways to make sure that you've got the water all over the sky. This is something called the wet and wet technique. Yeah, wherever the water goes, that's where the paint goes. Exactly. So keep your water outside of the pyramids. We're just painting the sky right now. And make it glossy, but with no puddles. So if you see any puddles, kind of push them around so that they don't pool anywhere. Now once your sky is nice and wet, grab some of your blue paint and paint in the sky. If you want, you can do kind of a horizontal brush stroke like this. And try to make the paint really smooth. Paint inside of your lines, everywhere that you already put water. You kind of have to work fast because otherwise the paper starts to dry. I can't work so fast without bumping into a pyramid. <laughs> That's okay. See, I made a small mistake there. That's all right. All right, so finish painting your sky. Nice. Then rinse out your brush and set it aside. Now grab your little paper towel that we tore apart and dip it a little bit in the water and squeeze out any extra. Okay, and kind of push it together so it forms this little blotting thing. See how it's almost shaped like a finger? Now we're gonna use it like a finger and we're gonna lift out some fluffy clouds. Look at that. So you're just dabbing and then turn your paper towel around so you don't use the blue side anymore. Just use a clean side to lift the paint out. You can make as many clouds as you want. You can make them any shape that you want. I like your clouds. Thank you, I like yours too. All right, so set that aside. And now it's time to paint the pyramids. We're gonna use this. This color. Yes, that's called yellow ochre. That's the perfect color for sand. It looks just like the pyramids in the picture. Exactly. Now you can paint that directly on. We don't have to pre-wet the pyramids first. And just cover up all the pyramids and the sand. It's all gonna be the same color. You might have to dip your brush in the water to get the paint flowing easily for you, but don't remove the paint all the way out. It's not a rinse, it's just a dip to wet your brush. I'm using the tip. All right, see how it's all the same color? The next color we're gonna use is this burnt sienna color right here. Actually, I have two of those. They're both of these are burnt sienna. But you see in the reference photo how these sides of the pyramid are darker? What we're gonna do is paint that as a shadow. I'm actually gonna mix in a little bit of black. But you can take the burnt sienna and make a brown tone right here. Not too much water though. If you have any extra water in your brush and it's dripping, remove it on your paper towel. That's important. Now we're gonna paint the front side of each pyramid with this shadow color. Try not to cover up the light side. The little tiny triangle is gonna stay nice and light. We're painting the biggest triangle a shadow color. 
I like your pyramids. I like yours too. And so see how I'm turning my brush different ways so I can stay inside of my lines? Good job. That's really good. Now, something else kind of fun that we can add to the foreground is to take that burnt sienna, that brown color, and if you want, we can create little foot tracks, footprints in the sand. Or like camels. Mm-hmm. Just adding little footprints just to make it more interesting. Give some mystery to it. And I'm adding a little bit of texture to the pyramids to make them look like they're made of stacked bricks, so these horizontal lines. But yeah, there we go. There's our beautiful ancient Egyptian pyramids. That was super easy, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's take the tape off. You can see our nice, beautiful white edges. Those look great. Good job. Now, Ansley wanted to share a joke about Egypt. What was your joke? What did the little Egyptian say when he woke up from a nightmare? I want my mummy. <laughs> mummy, not mommy. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.